I've always loved the idea of canning my own homebrew. I began researching it there recently and I came across Gorilla Canning in Dorset in the UK. Now, they produce two canning machines. The Gorilla One, which is a manual seamer, and the Gorilla 2, which is a semi-automatic canning machine. I contacted the guys at Gorilla Canning and they kindly sent me out the Gorilla 1, the manual version. So in this video, we are going to take a look at the machine and see how it works. Hey there guys, it's Glenn from the Beardy Man Craft Beers, inspiring home brewers to make awesome craft beer at home. Guys, if you're seeing value in this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It makes all the difference. And any of the links covered um, are featured down in the, the description below. So let's jump into it and check out the Gorilla One canning seamer. First up, as you'll see, it's a simple design. It feels solid and high quality. And the great thing here, guys, is the unit is actually manufactured in Dorset in the, uh, in the UK. Now, because the Gorilla One has no electrics or motor, it is very compact, you'll see that. And the great thing is, because it is compact, it makes it very easy to store the unit away. Obviously, there are pros and cons here. Hand-operated means you need to do some of the hard work, but the advantage is that there's no motor, there's no electrics, there's no power cable, so it is very quiet and it, that alone makes it very safe to use. Once you get the hang of the machine, it's surprisingly quick to use. Now, I batched an entire 38 litre batch in no time. If you're filling from a duo filler or something similar, you should find it very easy to keep up with the fill rate. And here's one I actually prepared earlier from the, um, from the batch. I obviously gave it a bit of a, a shake. Now, in this video, I'm not going into filling. This is all about the seaming of the cans. Cheers. Handily enough, the unit also comes with an attachment that allows you to replace the chuck hand crank with a standard handheld drill. This is gonna completely speed things up. One thing I did was to fix the unit to a very solid base. The great thing is that I just take a few parts off that it comes pre-drilled and it comes with four bolts to tightly secure this onto a base. Now, I used one of those um, standing tables that basically you can raise up and down, drill four holes and attach to it. Boom, job done. Now, the Gorilla One comes all calibrated. So, once you take it out of the box, you just literally have to put the handle on it and it's pretty much all ready to go uh, with very little setup. So, without further ado guys, it's demo time. So I need my four nuts, bolts and washers. I then drill four holes to match the whole template of the unit. 
I then fix each through the holes and tighten with the nuts and washers underneath. The base plate can hold either the 440 milliliter spacer or the 330 milliliter spacer. Now, settings for both seaming rollers are very precise. Seaming cans is a two part operation, so for full guidance on seam measurements and can teardowns, please visit gorillacanning.com. This view, without a can in place, shows the first seaming roller being pushed into the chuck. While this view, again with no can in place, shows the second seaming roller, operating position two, being pushed into the chuck, whilst the chuck lever continues rotating. Again, check out gorillacanning.com on full details for measuring a can seam. This quick demo illustrates this with empty cans, 330 milliliter, 440 milliliter and 500 milliliter cans. Now for the real demo, I'll be using the smallest 330 milliliter can. So I'll fix the correct spacer in place for that. So I set aside my sanitized can and my sanitized end cap. I've then filled up my can directly from a keg. Now note the foam on top. I then sit the can on top of the spacer plate and raise it up smoothly using the lifter handle until it locks into the chuck. For the first roll operation, the roll lever is carefully pushed into the number one position. I continue rotating the chuck another six to eight revolutions while keeping the roll lever in the first operating position. You need to continue rotating the chuck while pushing the roll lever away until the second roll adjustment screw touches the seamer body. Pull the lifter lever to lower the base plate, remove the can and voila, I have seamed a can. Remember, a small bit of practice will end up with perfectly seamed cans. Okay guys, so let's talk costs on the Gorilla One seamer. So at the time of making this video, the unit cost 750 euros or 660 pounds roughly. Now, I know to most home brewers, this is a, this is probably an expensive purchase for a nice to have. But hear me out, hear me out. And this is my thinking and has always been my thinking on this. If you are in a group uh, with other home brewers, there is the possibility that you could suggest to them that you do a, a group purchase on a unit like this. Once you do that, you all chip in a certain amount, whether there's four or there's five of you, um, and then the unit is rotated. Here's the thing, if I had one of these, I'm not using it every weekend. Like, I couldn't, there's no way I could keep up with that. As a home brewer, I couldn't. But if I was in a group of five or six, maybe four or five, we all chipped in, when then this unit can do a rotation within that group, and everyone then gets the opportunity to can their delicious homebrew. Now, I've only just began my research into the science behind canning your homebrew. There are, of course, industry best practices for canning beer at home, and that you need to understand the problems and issues around oxygen ingress. Now, I'm not in this video going to go into how you can a beer. Um, I canned this one way and I know there's lots of other ways with beer guns and using foam and everything else. I won't go into it. I don't know enough about it. Uh, I canned this one. 
it's canned conditioned, a bit of sugar, it's worked out fine. Um, I will improve on that over time. But if you are an expert in that field or you have knowledge around the likes of oxygen ingress and the best practices to uh, avoid introducing oxygen into your can, the description, please help us out here, guys. So would I recommend the Gorilla One to home brewers alike? Absolutely I would. I think it's a, it's a great unit. Um, for many reasons. It's solid, it's sturdy, it's robust, it's compact. The fact that it doesn't have a motor, it doesn't need to be plugged in, it's pretty much uh, ready to set up on your table and uh, get canning. I think it's a great unit. I really do. In the meantime guys, thanks a million for watching and I will see you soon for another homebrew feature. Guys, as I said, if you are finding value in these videos, please do give me a thumbs up. It means all the world to me. Guys, stay safe. Catch you soon.